Hey everyone, I'm DQ Clark, and this is your weekly Bible study parable on the Daniel Fast. Each week I present a biblical topic, talk about the meaning, and then give you the interpretation and how it can apply to your life. Let's get started. So, the parable. There was a father who had numerous sons and daughters whom he loved a great deal. They were almost too numerous to count, but he knew each and every one of them by name, and each was special and precious to him. The father owned a large and very precious tract of land, and on that land he built many, many houses, each specifically for his sons and daughters. Each house had a large area of land, and each room in the house had beautiful and exotic treasures from all over the world. Each room in that house was decorated for everything this father's sons and daughters would need, down to the very detail. The kitchen was filled with every tool and appliance and gadget imaginable. The pantries and the freezers and the refrigerators were filled with stockpiles of meats and cheeses and desserts and fruits and vegetables and spices galore. The sons and the daughters enjoyed the food, enjoyed the home, enjoyed the land to their heart's content. What the sons and daughters didn't realize was that all the treasures that the father had given them actually had a life of their own. They were sort of alive, so to speak. But the sons and daughters failed to recognize this. They actually ended up abusing the homes and the treasures that they were given by their father. They took them for granted and they used them however they saw fit. The father had even left instructions on how to care for the homes and the land, but the sons and daughters disregarded these instructions and did whatever they pleased. But there is one son though who was different from his brothers and his sisters. He saw how the land was being treated, how the homes were being treated, and he greatly mourned. He was so grieved that he gave up his home and his land for a while and lived out in the open field. He did not want to be tempted by the treasures in his home and sought his father's forgiveness for his siblings. This son had read the instructions that the father had left and knew that because of the way his siblings were treating the homes and the land, destruction would surely follow. So this son decided to stay in the open field for a while, asking his father's forgiveness for how his siblings had treated the land and spending time with his father to get renewed and to get strengthened so that he would not fall into the same temptations that his siblings had fallen into. He also went about seeking his father's will on what was to come. His father was pleased with his actions and honored his request. And because of it, he was actually given special favor and special blessings when he went back to his land. So the interpretation. <laughs> So here I've taken a very loose interpretation of a couple of stories on the Daniel fast found in Daniel chapter 10 verses two through three. So in this parable, the father obviously is God. The sons and the daughters and the tract of land and the homes and the treasures and the furnishings, those can actually be interpreted in two ways, which we'll discuss. So the first way represents actually Daniel from the Bible. In the book of Daniel, Daniel understands that the land of Judah, the people of Judah are in trouble. Judah has failed to follow the precepts that the Lord had given them on how to take care of the land. And because of it, we read that the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, over to Nebuchadnezzar. Even though Daniel goes into captivity, in captivity, he still fasts for his nation. He still fasts for the Lord's will, which is the Daniel fast that we read about in Daniel chapter 10. So even though Daniel goes into captivity, God is still with him. God has given Daniel special visions and dreams about things to come for his nation, which Daniel actually sees and grieves over. So he decides to do this 21 day fast that we read about in the Bible. And just like the parable, the son who represents Daniel steps away. He gives up the food and the pleasures and the treasures for a while, for a season, because like Daniel, he wants to see God's will. He wants to seek God's will and he wants to see what God will hold for the future. Just like in the parable, in other words, Daniel gives up something. He gives up something precious and comfortable to seek God's will and to seek God's assistance for what God has shown him is next to come for his nation. The second way this parable can be interpreted is with us. The first way was with Daniel, but this way is with us. We are that son that steps away when we fast and seek God's will in a certain area for a certain thing. We are that son that gives up our comfort, certain foods or social media or television or movies. We step away from certain things to seek God's will in a particular area. And we here in the present are the sons and daughters in the parable. And I'm not just talking about Christians here, I'm talking about all of God's people. For scripture says that we are all made in God's image. We are all made in the image of God. This is all of us and how we care for this earth that God has given us, how we take care of the land and the resources and the blessings that God has given us is representative of how the sons and daughters took care of their treasures in the parable. And in our present day, we sometimes fail to see 
how we have taken for granted God's gifts and blessings and resources that he's given us. But he's given us an instruction book, the Bible. And the Bible is the inspired word of God. It is God's word inspired to us, his instructions on how we take care of this earth, how we take care of those treasures. And what are God's treasures? What's his most important, wonderful treasures? Is it the homes that we're given? Is it the land that we sow, that we reap from? Is it the things that are around us? All those are good and great and wonderful, but his number one treasure is people. Those in our lives, our families, our friends, our acquaintances, our coworkers, our frenemies, our enemies, all of those people are very precious to God, very, very important to him. And how we take care of them is very important to him as well. Just like we saw in the parable, the sons and the daughters, they took for granted the charges that they were given. They weren't necessarily given people in the parable. They were given things. They were given houses and land and you know food and spices and all these wonderful treasures they were given, but they took them for granted. They didn't read the instruction book. They didn't read to see how do I take care of these things so that destruction doesn't come so that these things are well kept and well preserved. In our case, we have been given an instruction book, the Bible, the inspired word of God. And in that word, we see how we are to care for God's most precious treasure, his people, the people of this earth, the people made in his image. And that's every single solitary one of us on this planet, whether we know Christ or not, whether we know God or not, that's important to him. And every single one of those people are important to him. And if you'll notice, everything revolves around people, our jobs, our families, where we go to school, where we shop, where we buy groceries, everything revolves around people. So how we take care of them and how we take care of ourselves, how we take care of each other, is really very vitally important to God. But the thing with the sons and the daughters in the parable is that they didn't read the instructions. So someone else had to sort of step in and intercede on their behalf. This actually happened in two ways. One, we read that Daniel fasted for his nation to seek God's will for his people. But also we see the same thing in Jesus Christ. Jesus left his treasures. He left his earth, his heavenly throne, came down to earth to be with us. He left his you know, glory in heaven, his majesty in heaven to take on a human form to be with us to intercede on our behalf to the father for us in the parable the son denied himself stepped away from his treasures went out into the open field and interceded on our behalf to the father daniel did the same thing when he fasted for 21 days for his nation and jesus did the same thing when he stepped down from heaven onto earth and then stepped up on that cross for us. Actually, it can be the same with us. We can intercede for others. Perhaps you have a family member who isn't saved. Perhaps you have a loved one who's going through a health crisis. Perhaps you have someone who is in need of a financial breakthrough or a relational breakthrough or some sort of breakthrough. You can actually fast for them. You can fast on their behalf. You can step in the gap like the son in the parable, like Daniel did for his nation, like Jesus did for us. You can step in the gap for them, fasting for them and interceding on behalf of them to God. Just like the son in the parable, just like Daniel in the book of Daniel, just like Jesus, when we do fast, when we do intercede, when we do take something and present it before God, we then ourselves receive special grace and blessing and help in our times of need. So there are three key points I want you to take away from this parable. One, for this particular fast, for the Daniel fast, the focus was to give up something precious, just like Daniel gave up the king's choice foods and wines and delicacies. In a Daniel fast, in this particular fast, there's something precious that you want to give up. For a Daniel fast, this normally includes rich foods like meats and breads and desserts and cheeses and all those wonderful things that we love so much. Keep in mind that this is not the only way to fast. You might want to fast from a particular food group. You might want to fast from social media or from television or from movies or from some sort of entertainment. But the point is to take something valuable, something of treasure, something that means something to you, present that to God for a season, use that time that you would give to it in food preparation and shopping. Use that time you would give to it, to God, and let him renew you and you intercede and you seek out God's will in a particular situation. Two, just as Daniel fasted for his nation and Jesus came down and sacrificed himself for the world, you too have the opportunity to fast for a particular area, for a particular situation in your life. 
Again, perhaps someone you know is in need of something, or perhaps you see a cause, a social justice cause that moves your heart. This is an opportunity for you to take that person or to take that cause to God, to fast on their behalf or on that situation and present that information to God, present that cause to God and seek God's will in it. Seek God's God's design in it. Seek God's way in it. Seek God's will for what you can do in that particular situation and for how he can break down strongholds in that area. And three, fasting with the right motives is a way we please God. If you'll notice, Daniel, he fasted not for himself, but for his nation. And Jesus, yes, when he fasted in the wilderness, when he came down to prepare himself for his ministry, and when he stepped down from heaven and came down to earth for us, when he made that sacrifice for us, it was completely for us. So when you fast you know, for a cause, for a person, for a situation, that's not necessarily directly for you, but for a selfless reason, for the right motive, God then turns around and blesses you. He then gives you special grace, special favor, special help for your times of need. And just like Daniel may show you areas that you can pray on concerning that thing that you're fasting about. Remember that Daniel had visions and dreams about what would happen for his nation, but also for certain parts of the world. And he was able to take that and write those things down so that we even now pray about those things and seek God's will in those things. And God can do similar things for you. And it's been my experience that not only does God address those issues that we fasted about in the first place, but because we came to him with that pure heart, with that right motive, he then gives us special blessings as well. Fasting is an incredible opportunity to draw close to God and to intercede for those around us. The Daniel fast in particular is a great fast to start if fasting is new for you. I encourage you to read Daniel chapters 9 and 10 to get a background on the fast and to see what led Daniel to taking that particular 21 day fast. To help you with this, I've created a fasting resource guide I'd love to share with you. Check out the link in the description below. It's a pretty comprehensive booklet of recipes and a food list and meal plans and scriptures and prayers and just areas to focus on if you do partake in a 21 day fast. Again, it's free of charge. I want you guys to have it. I want you to take a look at it. Let it help you in your next fast. Check out the link in the description right below. And if you enjoyed the content of this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I love bringing you these videos each week. I love presenting these parables to you. And we do this each week. We go through a parable or life topic, discuss the meaning, discuss the application and how it can apply to your life and what you can take away from it. And as always, I list all scriptures that I mentioned right in the description below. So check those out as well. You guys are amazing. I am so happy to share this time with you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week and God bless you.